Hi there and welcome to another video on October 2025 solar generation stats. Uh, we'll get to the stats in a minute, but what's been happening this month? Well, this month I've discovered my hot water cylinder, my 210 litre tank is now starting to leak. Uh, it is over sort of 20 years old. I hadn't really noticed it before. Got some carpet in there in the uh, utility cupboard or the airing cupboard. And um, yeah, it's, it's just sort of found it wet on that carpet a little bit one day. It seems like the slow kind of immersion heating, because ours is only 1.5 kilowatt hours, is really is fine with it. It doesn't leak much at all. But as soon as you put the gas, uh, you fire it up really hot, really quick. And it seems to leak a lot more then. Uh, so I'm getting some quotes in for that. So that's going to be uh, a fairly pricey job, I believe. But more information on that later. Uh, let's discuss the solar generation stats for the month. But before we get into the stats, let's just remind ourselves of my solar panel system. Uh, so 14 Jinko 390 watt panels, uh, totaling 5.4 kilowatts, 10 on the south and 4 on the east, and a solar edge 4 kilowatt inverter. So that's the solar side. On the battery side, we've got the 3 kilowatt AC inverter and the 8 kilowatt Gen 1 Give Energy battery. And then of course I've got a few extra bits and bobs such as the My Energy Eddy heating the hot water, the Harvey and the Hub, and the Hypervolt EV charger. Okay, so these are the stats for October. 266.85. I can't believe I was talking about, you know, 400 last month. Last month I was going, oh, you know, we could have 400 would be brilliant in October. But this month has been pretty, well, last month in October has been pretty pants, to be honest. And the graph kind of tells that story. Um, although we had some wickedly good day on the 6th of October, 27 kilowatts. It was just, you know, nothing really got close to that except for the 24th of October, which was nearly 19 kilowatt hours. Um, yeah, the rest of the kind of days were terrible really, weren't they? I mean, there's so many small ones here. I think the worst one, to be honest, was probably that day for me in the east of England, 17th of October, 1.66 kilowatt hours. Uh, but there were several others just the same, to be honest. And the average was not great uh, per day. So the average for the month over 31 days yeah, we got one extra day this month as well, and that didn't make any difference. Uh, 8.6 kilowatt hours per day uh, on average for October. Let's see what that looks like compared to other Octobers. It was a bad October. Yeah, it was the worst uh, year for Octobers so far, with my first year of Octobers in 2022 being the best right up at 476. An amazing year for, for that, really. Then we came down a little bit, and I think 369 in 2023, 360 in 2024 is probably what we should have expected in 2025, to be honest, since that seems to be, you know, it happened for two years running, and the year before that was really good, it means that, you know, October 2025 was so bad at 266. Um, although, you know, it's all averages in the end, I suppose. I mean, September was really, really good, and the best September I'd ever had. And now we've got October, which is the worst October I've ever had. Um, it's just the way it goes, I suppose. Well, the Eddy was heating hot water overnight as usual. Uh, 148 kilowatt hours for the month. Didn't use much on the first few days. I think we were still on holiday then really for those couple of days, but obviously the hot water probably wasn't used at home as there was someone here. Um, but the rest of the days, pretty standard to be honest, um, across the board. Uh, let's just break that down in an Excel sheet if you want to have a quick look at that. Right, so I exported the numbers out of the My Energy dashboard and then I basically just arranged them into days and summed them up, grouped them up. And you can see there in the, well, the count column is really the number of kilowatt hours per day uh, that was used by the hot water. So on average, I'm kind of using about four to five kilowatt hours per day to heat the hot water at the cost of around sort of 30 to 40 pence to top it back up. Um, so for the month, slightly rounding, slightly lower figure there than what my energy recorded by about one kilowatt hour. Uh, but it looks just around, just over sort of 10 pounds for the month based on a 7p rate overnight. 
on Octopus Intelligent Go when it kind of runs. I get it to run at midnight and finish by sort of 5.30 in the morning for heating it up. So the blue line on the graph is the amount of kilowatts or kilowatt hours, should I say, and the uh, orange line on the bottom of the graph is the cost in pence. Right, onto the Hypervolt EV charger. October was slightly up on September because in September we were away on holiday, so charged the car less. And in October, I used 224.319 kilowatt hours, mainly going into the i3 again. So the total mileage for the i3 for October was 794 miles. Uh, based on the Hypervolt 224 kilowatt hours at 7p, that equals 15 pounds and 70 pence. So that averages out at around 2p a mile. And that means the car was getting about 3.54 miles on average uh, per kilowatt hour. Right, so into the Octopus Energy dashboard for October, um, we took from the grid 732.54 kilowatt hours, uh, less on the first couple of days, and then just, you can probably see the difference on how much the cars were probably charged, um, or how much electricity was required for heating the hot water, etc. Uh, the cost of that came out at, excluding the standing charge, was £67.35. If you see the pink spikes there, that's because of the free electricity hours. We had about three hours of electricity for free on that day. Uh, and we used about £9.55 in that uh, on that one. And then the day before, there was a free hour, £5.82. And then there was one then on the 5th of October, £3.39. As you'll see in the figures at the end, basically that money then was given back to me and it was subtracted from the kind of monthly totals. Moving on to the amount that was exported, 152 kilowatt hours for the month. Uh, not a great deal, to be honest. Some days nothing due to those days that matched uh, the solar generation incoming really, to be honest, pretty much. Um, had a really good spiky day there on the 6th, the 23 kilowatt hours. That was that sunny day, so most of it went out the door. And most of the other days were barely lucky if I sort of exported 6 to 10 kilowatt hours, to be honest. Uh, Money-wise, it added up to £22.83 based on the standard 15p per kilowatt hour export through Octopus. And then finally on to the gas. Yeah, the heating's been on a little bit more towards the end of the month, although we have used a little bit of electrical heating as well. Uh, so for October, 277.405 kilowatt hours in gas at a cost of, without the standing charge, 17 pounds and 46 pence. I am still on this uh, fixed tariff, um, although the rate, the new rate for the flexible gas is slightly lower, but then the standing charge is slightly higher. So I'm slightly, slightly, slightly better off still on this fixed um, tariff that they offered me for the gas. Okay, so on to some numbers then for October 2025. Grid import, we used 732 kilowatt hours. That equaled 67 pounds and 35 pence, which averages out per kilowatt hour to be 9p. Although obviously we did use some peak rate electric, which was sort of credited back to us, which kind of skews the number a little bit. Uh, but on the export, 152 kilowatt hours were exported at 15p per kilowatt hour, and that equaled 22 pounds and 83 pence. For the gas, 1st of October, whole month, 277 kilowatt hours at the rate of 6.29 pence per kilowatt hour. Uh, 17 pounds and 46 pence, obviously not including the standing charge. And then if we have a look at the standing charges, gas uh, has stayed the same because I'm on this fixed rate at 29.38 pence a day, times 31 days is nine pounds and 11 pence. And the electric has gone up this month. Um, it was 45 pence a day. Uh, and now the standing charge is 47.7 pence per day for me in the East of England, uh, times 31 days, equals 14 pounds and 79 pence. So overall then, gas 1746 plus the standing charge equals 2657. Now the electric, uh, we use 67 pounds and 35 pence from the grid. 
uh, plus the standing charge of 1479, but then minus uh, the export 2283, and then minus uh, the pay, well, the money that was given back to us because of the free electricity that we used. That equaled 16 pounds and 98 pence, which meant that we really spent 42 pounds and 33 pence for October on the electric. If you add them both together, comes out to 68 pounds and 90 pence. Uh, the moment or through the year, I usually kind of spend uh, my direct debits about, I've said it to about 50 pounds a month to kind of cover uh, the gas over winter as well. So now we're coming into winter slightly over the 50 pounds that I'd normally put in, but it's not a problem. Uh, the gas, we've not really had it on. It's not really, really cold at the moment, but I take it it will be very soon. Now we're sort of coming into November. So expect that gas price to really uh, jump up. So that's it for the month of October. Not great results. Uh, I can't believe I was predicting like 400 kilowatt hours last month and now we've got uh, something with a two at the beginning. Um, but anyway, hopefully uh, November won't be as bad as what October was, but we'll have to wait and see, of course. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to uh, like the video if you did, and don't forget to leave a comment about your solar system, how you got on Oct in October. Was it your worst um, uh, October ever as well, just like me? And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber. I'll speak to you soon.